So today beautiful birds came into this room. They are making some noise. Since you are not there in this class, birds are occupying your places. Generation and conduction of nerve impulse. Generation and conduction of nerve impulse. Right? Okay, we have two birds in this class today. Generation and conduction of nerve impulse. So, how the nerve impulse is generated? So, what happens is, when you are uh, receiving any external stimuli, what is an external stimuli? Any disturbance in the environment, okay? Any disturbance from external environment, any disturbance, any disturbance from external environment, from external environment is called as external stimuli. So, even uh, when that will be generated, when someone touches you, when you get some sound. When you get a nice sweet smell, uh, when uh, you see something from outside, when your eyes, with the help of eyes, you are seeing. Seeing means light signals are entering in your body, etc. So, you need not explain. You, I think you have understood when someone touches you, when someone, some sound enters, when some smell enters <coughs> into your nose or... Uh, when you see something with your eyes, all these are external disturbances only. So when these disturbances reach your body, so they are all from outside, yes or no? So when these disturbances reach your body, it is an external stimuli. So when this external stimuli, when this external stimuli reaches your receptor cells, receptor cells, these receptor cells are called so because they receive external stimuli. Receive external stimuli. Okay. So what are those receptor cells? I said you yesterday also. What are the receptors that are present in eyes? Photoreceptors. Ears. Auditory receptors, nose, olfactory receptors, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, gustatory receptors, and finally, skin. Cutaneous receptors. When these receptors receive any external stimuli like these, okay, if any external stimuli reaches these receptor cells, it generates a small electric signal, okay. That electric signal is called as nerve impulse or it is also called as action potential. Other word for nerve impulse is action potential. What is this nerve impulse? A small amount of electric signal. Electric signal generated. Generated when a receptor is stimulated. When a receptor is stimulated, some electric signal is generated. How much amount of electric signal? This electric signal is a very small electric signal, 0.055 volts. Okay? Or 5 millivolts. 
the same is equal to 5 millivolts. This much amount of energy, uh, electric signal is generated when someone touches you, when some sound enters your eye, ears, when some light enters your eyes, when some smell enters your nose. So, this is a small amount of energy, electric signal that is generated and it is called as nerve impulse or action potential. Right? After it is generated, after the signal is generated, what happens? After the signal is generated, this signal passes from the receptor. Receptor means where is it present? In sense organ. So, from sense organs, it passes to sensory nerves. What are sensory nerves? Yesterday I said, these are the nerves that carry the signal towards central nervous system. From here, the signal is passing this from this receptor cell to central nervous system. That means brain or spinal cord. Why do I mention brain or spinal cord all the time? Why not brain and spinal cord? Means here all the signals do not reach brain. Some signals return from spinal cord itself. Okay. That is, those things we'll discuss. What are those signals which are reaching only spinal cord, which signals will reach brain, we'll discuss. But here you need to understand that all signals do not reach brain. Some signals return directly from spinal cord. That's why I'm writing here brain or spinal cord. After that, motor nerves. Motor nerves carry the signal from central nervous system to muscles or glands. Okay. These muscles or glands are called as these muscles or glands are called as effector organs. Okay, effector organs. The receptor receives the signal from external environment, passes to sensory nerve, then it passes through central nervous system. Our central nervous system will give an appropriate. Uh, a written signal, what should be done. That written signal is carried by motor nerves and it is carried to muscles and glands. These are glands and muscles are getting affected. That's why they are called as effector organs. Now in this flowchart, there is no mention of interneuron. Why? What is the reason there is no mention of interneuron? Because interneurons are present in interneurons are present in brain or spinal cord. So in no other organ you can see interneurons. So in brain, where is it reaching? So I said you when I said you the uh, neuron, I said you it is a structural and functional unit of nervous system. That means total brain is made up of neurons only. Total spinal cord is made up of neurons only, okay? There may be other in, uh, substance between that uh, neurons. The, between the cells, there can be some substances, but like yesterday we discussed, chemical uh, uh, signals are transmitted through, uh, what do you say, neurotransmitters. Like that some substances can be present between the cells, but total brain or total spinal cord is made up of... Uh, Neurons only, those neurons which are present in brain and spinal cord are called as interneurons. So when a sensory nerve is passing from any sense organ to brain, it is actually going to the interneuron. Okay. And at the interneuron, at that junction of interneuron, the information get transmitted between brain. So what is the signal that is passing to Brain will exchange at interneuron and new signal that should come to motor neuron will be entering the uh, what is it, more interneuron and it will pass to the 
other organs, right? So this is how the signal is transmitting inside the uh, body parts. Now, how the signals are transmitted inside a neuron? Inside a neuron, the signals are transmitted, it reaches first dendrites. After reaching dendrites, it enters into cyton or soma or cell body. From there, it passes to from cyton, it is passing to axon, axon to axon terminals. From axon terminals, it is passing to synaptic knob. Synaptic knob is a bulged structure. At the end of axon terminal, there is a bulged structure. That bulged structure is called a synaptic knob. And finally, it passes through synapse. Okay. So, this is the conduction of nerve impulse inside a neuron. Inside a neuron, the signal reaches from dendrites to cyton, cyton to axon, axon to axon terminal, then to synoptic knob, then it reaches synapse. So, once let us revise what is a synapse. Synapse. So, listen carefully. Synaptic knob. So, when signals are transferring from one neuron to neuro other neuron, at the end of each neuron, there is a knob-like structure called as synaptic knob. This knob-like structure is called as synaptic knob. Okay. So, every uh, axon terminal ends in this type of knob-like structure called as synaptic knob. At the end, it is bulged like this. Okay, this bulged portion is called as synaptic knob. At this place, there is a small gap between this is dendrite. This is dendrite. This is synaptic knob. So, between there is a small space. Here the cytoplasm is ending till here. Here the cytoplasm is starting from here. So, in between, it is not possible for conduction of nerve impulse because here the signals will stop because cytoplasm is ending here. Here signals will start. So, between for conduction, some chemicals are released. Those chemicals are called as neurotransmitters. These chemicals are called as neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters... Example, serotonin, dopamine, dopamine, serotonin, etc. Who is these neurotransmitters will pass here, the chemical signals are generated, then only the conduction of nerve impulse takes place, okay? Okay, children, if voice is not clear, I'll send you the recorded video. Don't worry.